Hello everyone, and I'm very thrilled to welcome you back on my channel. Congrats on your first step to achieving mastery in your software engineering career by learning universal principles that would help upscale your career, basically. So today, we are kicking off our first playlist with dependency injection. And on this playlist, we would be learning like what, what kind of benefits we gain by applying DI correctly. We would also learn foundational techniques and principles that form up the DI, basically, constructor, property, and method injection. We would also cover anti-patterns and how to spot them because it's very important to know them and see them in the code base. Uh, like anti-patterns include control freak, constructor, over-injection, constraint construction, service locator, ambient context. All of them are considered anti-patterns. And apart from anti-patterns, we would also use a single pattern that would help you scale your project to infinity, which is composition root. And this is the only pattern that would help you scale, maintain, ease of test it, and reuse uh, all of your existing components in your project. So the last piece in the chain would, would be the object lifetime, composition, and interception that form up the uh, final piece of DI. So if you would ask me why on earth I did decide to choose DI as the first topic uh, on my channel is because I had to work on a code base that would, that looked like this. As you can see, there's like 1000 lines long view controller that does a bunch of stuff and it's very hard to understand it. It's very complex. It's hard to change it. And everyone is afraid of it because changing a single line might break some other feature in some other screen, which is not very great, but uh, we all had to deal with it. So if you are working on such a legacy code base, well, you are on a right track. So changing and working on these kind of code bases is a headache basically, and ideally you want to avoid it. What do you exactly gain by applying the eye correctly? So the first is the maintainability, obvious as it is, but we always should be striving for maintainability on the first place. And um, DI helps us decompose things into smaller components and uh, compose them as needed. Testability is very debatable to most of the engineers, but not to me personally. I am always for testing and like testing is one of my number one priorities whenever writing a project or any feature. So DI is like, prime strategy to making your things testable. If you ever found yourself working in a team and stepping on each other's toes while developing a feature and you always have merge conflicts, then DI is the, is the key to enabling parallel development. For example, if you have three people in a team, one of you could be doing UI and the other person could be doing networking and, the, and you could be doing caching, right? And then you compose in a centralized place. Sounds ideal, right? And the last thing is reusability. If you ever found yourself using inheritance to reuse code, this is not great because it, per it creates lots of problems uh, in, in the project and there are actually better ways to reuse existing code. So dependency injection is a pretty complex topic. However, before learning it deeply, we need to understand what is, what is its atomic unit. So what is dependency actually? So uh, let's consider a very simple example. I guess any iOS engineer has seen uh, this kind of class in their life. So um, view controller inherits from a UI view controller and it has a simple single method viewed load. So what, what does this code actually tell us? This tells us that view controller actually depends on UI view controller. So it inherits from UI view controller. However, the code itself does not translate the, um, the, the dependency that view controller has on a UI view controller. And I love to draw trigrams in this case. So um, let's see it in action. As you can see, view controller class is defined as an orange box and it inherits from UI view controller. And we define inheritance as a solid line going from view controller to UI view controller and has an empty arrow hat on top. So um, view controller inherits from UI view controller. However, UI view controller depends on UI kit because it's defined inside UI kit module. And the pattern starts to emerge, right? So since there were just like six lines of code, 
we can easily see that commenting out in port UIKit does not let us build the project. So view controller actually depends on UIKit since it depends on UI view controller. This is basically how we define a dependency. And remember that inheritance is the strongest of couplings. If you have a base class and you can and you inherit from it, there's a lot of threat in your design because change in the base class would trigger a regression in all of your children. As you can see, there are a lot of methods and properties that we're not interested in, but we get all of them for free, maybe not for free. Um, so this this is very uh, very strong type of coupling. Uh, ideally, try to avoid it. The other thing is protocol conformance. So it is less strong than inheritance. However, whenever we conform to a protocol, we need to implement a list of methods that are defined inside that protocol. So it's also a type of dependency. And we can illustrate it uh, as, another, as another diagram. As you can see, item loader is a protocol and uh, it has a less than and greater than signs uh, to define that it's an abstraction so that we can e easily see it uh, in the diagram. And as you can see, item loader depends on item and item depends on foundation because of the UUID type. So let's look a bit closer. We have a remote item loader that conforms item loader protocol. And uh, as part of the Swift language, we have to um, implement the protocol and define the methods inside of our class. So um, adding a remote item loader could be translated into a diagram like this. So remote item loader conforms to or implements some sort of an abstraction. Uh, in our case, it's item loader. So we define a, an, in, an interface extension or a protocol conformance as a dashed line with an empty arrow head. And we define just a dependency as a type as a solid line with a bolded arrowhead. And apart from having uh, just inheritance and protocol, we we can basically categorize all of them into two types of dependencies, source code dependency. So what do we actually mean by source code dependency? By source code dependency, I mean that if we are referencing any type, uh, be it our own or someone else's that's defined in some other project, we have a source code dependency. And since we reference item in an item slaughter protocol, we basically depend on item. If it changes, it would certainly break our code as well. If it's initializer changes, properties, names of the properties, or it's just like type name changes, it would also certainly break us. And as you can see, item uh, has a single property UUID. So it also depends on foundation because um, there is a modular dependency because UID is defined in some other framework, as you can see on this uh, example, since UI, UUID is defined in foundation. Since theory isn't that enough, uh, we better learn like everything that we've just covered with uh, a practical example. So we'd have a single protocol, a cache service that saves an item to a core data managed context. And um, admittedly, it has an import core data in it. And uh, by practical stuff, I meant that we can draw a diagram representing relationships and like dependencies between um, protocols and types. And if we define our cache service as an orange box, we will have a core data that lives somewhere else, right? So it has a direct dependency on it. And we define a direct dependency as a solid line with a bold arrowhead. However, uh, as we remember, we have an item as well. So we depend on item, which now let's say it would be defined as an orange box because these types um, live together right now, but we might color them differently if they would be living somewhere else. And this is an item. We have a cache manager here, which conforms to the protocol, right? Let's um, draw that as one, that one as well. And let's draw it with a different color right now. Cache manager, which conforms to cache service protocol. And we define protocol conformance with 
a dashed line with an empty arrowhead, as we remember. However, since it conforms to the protocol, it also depends on item, and it also depends on core data. Okay. As you can see, diagram becomes starts becoming com more more complex. Although we have just like three lines of code here that uh, defines uh, protocol conformance, and we have our um, previous type, which is item item slaughter remote item slaughter. Let's um, draw them as well, and this would be item slaughter. Depends on item as usual. Then we have a remote item slaughter that basically conforms to the protocol. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can define foundation as well somewhere here. And this one depends on foundation as well. As a matter of fact, these also depend on foundation. And this one also depends on foundation. As you can see, so many errors going just per protocol conformance. This is a clear indication that um, we should always be careful when referencing some other types. Let's let me complete the diagram. Then we can, okay, this one and this one, yeah, colored incorrectly. Okay, uh, so <laughs> remote item slaughter protocol conforms item slaughter. Oh, I forgot to label it correctly. And then we reference foundation because of the UID type and we reference item finally. Yeah, diagram might seem daunting and complex on the first sight, but uh, don't be discouraged. It's It pays off whenever you visualize code in this way. And we have a view controller as our final stuff here. Um, it has basically two dependencies, remote item slaughter, cache manager, core data, item, just loads items on view to load and then tries to cache them, cache the first item that comes. So let's translate this one into diagram as well. So if we have a view controller, oh, let me draw it. Let me draw it here. I have a view controller. It inherits from the UI view controller, right? And then it's defined inside UI kit. So UI view controller references this one as well. Then there is a dependency going from UI view controller to UI kit. Oops. And we need to remember that view controller holds a reference to item slaughter and cache service. So view controller holds a reference to cache service, which is an abstraction. And then it holds reference to the cache manager. Yeah, this diagram is getting out of hand pretty quickly. And then view controller references both item loader and remote item loader. And references remote item slaughter. As a matter of fact, it references item as well. <laughs> and um, 
since we have since we've already defined item slaughter, cache service, cache manager, remote item slaughter, item, we have a final missing piece which is core data. And we depend on core data. Even though we have just 22 lines of code, can you imagine how many arrows are going from view controller to different components? This is pretty alarming, right? Because any change in one of the existing dependencies, like if we just rename cache service, the code wouldn't compile. Or if we change from like item from something else that will also not compile, right? Because that, well, let, let me actually demonstrate this. Go to cache service and just change to um, item to be a string and come back to the view controller, try to build my project. It wouldn't actually build, right? Because cannot convert value of type item to expected argument type string. So having too many dependencies uh, is a big problem because change in any of them would certainly lead uh, to our code to be broken as well. And uh, since there is just uh, since we are inside a view controller class, uh, if we go and inspect the errors, our cache manager would also was also broken. If we go back to the diagram, our cache manager depends on cache service. That's how it got broken as well. So but just changing the type in a protocol, we broke both of our clients. As a final note, I'd like to invite you to all to practice by opening your existing project or any pet project you ever had to work on. Open the editor and try to draw some dependencies between your types. It would be a very helpful example and knowing how to draw diagrams would help you easily spot bottlenecks in your project. So that would be it. Thanks a lot for watching.